What's the crack lads? Welcome back to another player pack review. Today we're taking a look at the new Italian Deluxe League selection. So as ever lads, look, I always preface this by saying that a lot of these players and whether they're good or not for your squad, whether you should spin or skip, is dependent on your squad itself and how good of a team you have. If you've got epics and legends and, you know, trained up players that are in, you know, the 90 plus range, I don't think any of these are going to make a massive difference to you. Yeah, there's a couple which we'll focus on. Um, but for all intents and purposes, lads, these are, I think, you know, more of an entry point for newcomers or for medium squads that are looking to take that extra step. Um, so I definitely think that you should take a look at that and compare them and see exactly who you have in your squad, um, you know, instead of just focusing on, you know, new cards or whatever. So that's what I would say. Now, saying that there are some excellent cards in here, which we will get into. And we're going to start off with the daddy of them all, Skriniar. This guy is a very, very good center back, lads. He is a monster. I always like playing with two destroyers or else three destroyers sometimes if I'm playing a three at the back, depending on how aggressive I want to be. This guy has got everything you could possibly want. He's got a wavering form. He's also got man marking, blocker and sliding tackle as well as fighting spirit. He doesn't have interception, which is a bit of an issue, but you can obviously throw that on him if you are looking to train up some additional skills. And his stats just go through the roof, right? The big part of what I've kind of found from, you know, getting to Division 1 multiple times, um, you know, being an average player like myself, uh, you know, is that you need to have consistency in how your players handle on the pitch, so that they're very interchangeable, right? And one way I found of balancing that is getting a defender that has got mid to high 90s in his stats for defense, so the awareness, tackling, aggression, and defensive engagement, and then has also got either 70 or 75 acceleration. Now, obviously, it would be better if he had 75 acceleration, not that you really need acceleration that much, but what I like about this guy is he's also got 80 header, 83 jump, and 84 physical contact. So sometimes you have to have a trade-off as to whether a player is going to be that little bit faster with no physicality, or else you're going to have a little less de uh, defense, right? Now, what we could do here is if we wanted to go that route is we could just take one off defense, and then we could pop a few more onto... Um, we could pop a few more onto Dexterity if we wanted to. You know, we could get him up to 73 acceleration. But I genuinely think, you know, we have the little trick there of popping four into goalkeeper one stat as well. And that would be able to get our jump up to 83 instead of having it at like 81 or 82, which I think will make a slight difference to this card because of his height. And the fact that he's a destroyer, I do very much recommend you have a look at this player. If you're looking to spin, you have an extra, you know, 100 coins just knocking around and you happen to get him. I do think that he is a fantastic player to get, right? Especially with all the player skills and all the, the stats that can be trained up. We also have Tenali. Now, they did release an, another version of Tenali a while back, which was the AC Milan pack, which we'll see here. So this AC Milan pack is extremely similar to the one that they have. Um, but the Italian pack that they released a while back, uh, which was one of the best versions of Tenali, I genuinely think that, you know, these are identical cards apart from a couple of little bits and pieces. In fact, that this card itself is actually a better version than this Italian card. So the Italian card had three less offensive awareness, low pass, and then one less on lofted pass aggression, balance, and speed, with two less on free kicks, right? So the AC Milan pack was slightly better defensively, but worse in other ways. You can see there all the minuses. Um, there are the stat differences between the cards just by hovering over them on eFootballDB. Um, this is a standard card with 37 levels. This guy's got 21 levels. So obviously the Italian pack at 24 levels, the Milan pack at 30 levels. So they are going to be slightly better cards once you've trained them up, um, especially when you give the team play style and all that. But I do think that this is a very good entry point for a, a Tenali card if you do not have him as an anchorman, right? Um, because he did have a box-to-box -box version of him as a player of the week as well, which was quite decent. It was a very defensive-minded player. But I really like this uh, this uh, guy as an anchorman, lads. I think if you don't have a, an epic or a, or a legend DMF, such as Makaleli or Davids, and you didn't spin for Kante and you don't have Kante, and you're looking for something a little different, you know, a passer and a really good disruptor in the pitch that can still play a bit of ball, that's not just a defensive juggernaut, I think this guy will definitely suit a lot of possession-based players and people that are very comfortable with the ball. I mean, look at the stats that he has, as well as having the player skills, you know, interception, one-touch pass, way to pass, and double-touch. Like, it's an excellent blend of how he handles, and he does kind of play a little bit like Pirlo. That is probably how I would say it. He's a non-epic version of Pirlo, um, and, and of course, the aggression is going to be huge as well for winning you back the ball. We also have Koopy, as I call him, Koopa, uh, King of the Koopas, Bowser, a Koop Miners. 
This guy is just an average DMF, but what sets him apart is his player skills. So he's got blocker, he's got weighted pass, true pass, and one-touch pass, rising shots, first-time shot, and long-range shooting, and fighting spirit, as well as uh, pinpoint crossing. And he also has, unusually enough, long-ranger and long-ball experts. So this guy, he is a box-to-box, -box, he is a DMF box-to-box, -box, and he's a left-footer. So that's kind of why I like this guy. He has unwavering form as well, and he is on B form. Um, I do think that they released a better version of him here with 33 levels to go. Um, and he's only a slightly worse card, but better tackling, better acceleration, better speed, and better finishing. So this was a more defensive-minded player, but he had better actual attack and stats, so make it make sense. But anyway, um, this is probably a better version if you have him, but I definitely think that this guy is a good player as well from Atalanta. So look, he's just an average box-to-box -box with some brilliant player skills. So it's kind of a, a trade-off there as well with the two of them. Now, Otherwise, right, we have got a couple of other players here that I'm not really going to focus too much on, including this goalkeeper, Musso. I mean, I don't really ever really focus on goalkeepers. This guy is going to go to around 90 reflexes, but there's just a dime a dozen of these goalkeepers there. We also have Milic there as well. Um, this guy is a very good target man. Uh, he does have standard form. He's on C rating. He doesn't have uh, one touch pass to bring others into the game. I mean, and I think when you can get somebody like Collar uh from the eFootball point shop for free or you can get a really cheap player for gp uh such as you know unachu or somebody like that i don't think that this guy is going to be worth spinning for that's just my opinion now if you got him you can obviously get him as a pure anchorman you know he's tall and that but he's not tall enough to be kind of like you know overpowering um we also have this guy here uh posh posh this guy is an early crosser by trade that's kind of how he is uh, going to be set up uh, which is a very unusual for centre back, but he does play right back. He has blocker, interception, heading, area superiority. He's fairly tall as well. He's on B rating, so check him out as well. I think as a centre back, he's just not good enough, and as a right back, he's not fast enough. So that's a bit of an issue with him. We also have Baraji here. This guy, another left back. He's just an average player, lads, as well. He is unwavering form, I know. But for me, I mean, you need to have that balance between offensive and defensive. And then you also need to have high aggression on your left or right backs if they're going to be coming up against really tricky wingers. Um, that's just my opinion on that. So there's a lot of average players in here, a lot of average cards in here. Um, we have Cristante then as well, is the last guy that we, we probably won't look at too much in detail. Yeah, he's just got very standard cards. I mean, he does have interception and double touch, but he doesn't have one touch pass. You know, he's... Look, a lot of these cars that are thrown at us now are not going to be able to to um like set the world on fire. There are some players that they are going to release, and I think future players that they release like end of season packs and that are going to be good. Um, but for me, a lot of these cards are just kind of fodder, really, if you do spin them. So uh, we do have. I want to focus on this guy Elmas. Now this guy's got a very nice uh, blend of player skills with one touch pass, double touch, flip flap. All of these cards have nice um or all of his cards have got nice player skills, but I think that this guy is probably the best of them, even though it's pretty much identical to uh, the player of the week card that they released. This guy is down as a center midfielder, but I would probably be playing him as a left winger, depending on how you want to train him up. And you could have him in a very kind of advanced role because of that dribbling, because of that acceleration, balance, offensive awareness, and because of aggression as well. This guy will kind of defend from the top. So he is a very good alternative to have. And we also have Felipe Anderson. This guy is a very good winger as well. <sighs> Look, he's not, is he going to be able to compete with Dembele or Neymar or one of those guys? No, I mean, he's not. Like you have to kind of, you have to kind of butter your bread with what you have, lads. That's kind of what it is. These are not game-changing players, in my opinion. 92 acceleration, 88 balance, and 90 type possession is very, very decent. But there's a lot of wingers that have these type of stats that you can get for standard GP, you know, for 100,000 GP, and train them up exactly how you want to train them up and give them the player skills that exactly that you want to give them. So, you know, I like that he's got a Roman flank and that he can play in multiple positions. But other than that, you know, he's not somebody that I really um, kind of would want to be getting in my squad. And then last but not least, we have this other winger, Lariente. And again, he's got high acceleration, balance, dribbling is very good. He's down as a Roman flank as well. And he's probably potentially got better player skills than Felipe Anderson. But it's the same, you know, it's the same thing. You know, it's just an average kind of 90 balance, 90 acceleration, 90 dribbling type winger that you can get that are a dime a dozen in the GP market. So make it that what you would want, lads. If there is a player in here that you really are looking at and you're really a fan of, yeah, that's different. That's a different kind of conversation. Um, You know, it's kind of like I always say that a lot of the legends that they release, I don't really have much of an interest in because, you know, I have my team set up. 
if I am going to be playing try-hard mode, there's going to be very, very few players that they could add that will replace Makalele or Mario or Ian Collar or uh, Vieira in midfield or Maldini at the back. You know, unless the, if they added Roy Keane, I'd be throwing the mortgage at it. You know, that kind of way. I'd be, I'd be throwing every card I have in my wallet at it um, to get Roy Keane. So it just depends on your perspective of how you want to enjoy the cards. But there is a lot of standard GP options available that, like outperform these cards so yeah that is it for me lads i'll be back in a bit hope you check in on the stream today and if not we will see you later and uh, don't forget to subscribe peace